a blessed human life, a blessed human life. This is what we're going to be covering. And so we're going to do something really awesome that we'll explain a little bit later where we will have um, just some optional group times where we can get into some material to expound on this. Um, and um, anyway, so this will be about five week series. We'll get into those details later. But uh, this is what we're covering, a blessed human life, a blessed human life. And so, uh, like I said, the first question I ask is, what is human life? And so uh, this is the question of the ages. What is human life? And you can define this in many different ways. Uh, you could take a look at the word human. What is, what is it to be human? You could take a, uh, the word life. What does life mean? Life is a very mysterious word because it can refer to so many different things. You know, there's all kinds of different living animals, uh, living beings. Uh, you know, life also refers to something that, you know, a quality of being living. Um, you know, life can also refer to our lifespan. It's just there's so many different ways to look at this word life. Um, but we're going we're gonna, to uh, kind of focus ourselves and just think of human life referring to human existence, the existence of man. And what the existence of man is just what man is. And so our human life shows the secret of our being human. So if someone had never heard of a human being before, never heard of human life, how would they see it? How would they know what it is? They would look at us. They would look at us and they would see human life. Okay. They would say, see human life. Um, but you know, uh, uh, a lot of people uh, define what the purpose of human life is. I took a class in college on Marxist theory, which was very interesting, but it, it was answering that question, what is the existence for? And some people just say, there's none, you know, there's none. But I think you all are here uh, uh, because I think you all believe that there is a point to life. There is a point to our human existence. And so, um, so, um, uh, yeah, so going forward, you know, just let's just break it down for a second, okay? So we experience human life uh, from the time that we're born, right? In the first three years or so, all we know is to eat, drink, and play, right? Hannes has a two-year-old. It's, it's his second birthday today, you know, meals. And all he knows to do is eat, drink, and play. That's all he knows to do, okay? He doesn't understand anything else, you know? Um, but as we grow up, little by little, um, uh, um, our life becomes more complex and uh, our, taste, our taste for pleasure increases. But on the other hand, something very interesting, um, our gratification or the fulfillment we derive from pleasure actually decreases. So our, our desire for pleasure increases, but our gratification for pleasure uh, from pleasure it decreases and we'll I'll get into that later but so you know Niels he's gonna grow up you know we've grown up and uh, things have become more complex and especially starting to when we get into academics I would say you know most of us a lot of us here have either been through college or you know we're finishing up high school going into college or we're in college now maybe you're graduating maybe you're in grad school and I think you would agree with me that life is complex. Human life is very complex. And uh, there's three, thing, three ways to define these complexities. So we have demands, expectations, and pressure, okay? Uh, th this, in a sense, you could say, begins in kindergarten. We have demands from teacher. Uh, we have expectations from parents. We have pressures from schoolwork, you know, schoolwork. Uh, you, you name it. We just, there's, we're full of, our life is full of demands, expectations, and pressure. And um, even there's a quote from an author that says, uh, anxiety is the sum total of human life. Okay. That's not a positive thing, but you could write that down if you're taking notes, because it's a, it's a good thing to remember. Anxiety is the sum total of human life. So what is human life issue in? What is the total of it? You know, if you add it all up, you just have anxiety. And, um, you know, this happens in school, in college, anxiety. You know, some of you might be taking midterms. Uh, I know Ivan was telling me he has a midterm next week. Um, there's anxiety that comes, stress, you know. And uh, guess what? You graduate college, you get a job, 
there's more anxiety and more stress. And then you get a family, you know, all that, more anxiety and more stress. So that is just a way, you know, I, I don't want to say it, put it in a bad way, but that's just a way to look at human life and what our human life is. But praise the Lord, we are not just talking about a human life today. We are talking about a blessed human life. So what is a blessed human life? And let's all ask that to ourselves. You can stay muted, but let's read that together. One, two, three. What is a blessed human life? Okay, a blessed human life. Um, and so, yeah, what is blessing? What is blessing? What does it mean to be blessed? You know, a lot of people have different definitions. But, you know, most of us, if not all of us, are probably believers. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're Christians. And, um, you know, we love the Lord. And um, probably, I would say, many of us probably have been a, a believer for a while. And if you haven't, that's okay. Uh, we all have different stories. But uh, at one point in our life, maybe it was when we were growing up, maybe it was when we were in sixth grade or before that. Uh, for me, it was a little bit before that. Um, I, I, I heard the gospel. I believed in Jesus. And I received salvation. And what uh, we acquired at that point is a priceless blessing. We acquired a priceless blessing. And so the first time I prayed to receive the Lord, I was in the first grade, um, whether it was genuine or not. But uh, I believed, I, pr I prayed to receive Jesus into my heart. Um, but I had no idea. I did not understand what I believed or why I believed. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't understand why I believed. Um, and that was because I was young. And maybe you were young too when you first prayed to receive the Lord. Maybe you did have an understanding. It's all different for us. Just speaking a little bit from my experience. Oops, how did I do that? Okay, uh, there we go. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, um, Okay. so we acquired a precious, a priceless blessing. Um, uh, but um, but like, we, like I said, we might not have understand what we received, you know? Um, we might not have understood it. So, and uh, uh, hearing this word from the Lord Jesus, hearing the gospel is actually a, uh, is a very deep thing. You know, receiving Jesus is a very deep thing. And it's deep because it concerns our very being, concerns our very being. And um, I would just say that uh, whether, whether at the time we received Christ, we had this experience, or if we have this experience uh, that I'm about to explain later in our life, or if we haven't had that experience yet, that's okay. But, but I'm just gonna describe this experience. Okay, I need to stop doing that. Uh, how do I do that? Okay. I'm working on Google Slides. It's a really complex program. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, we, so basically we come to a point, a critical moment, a point, a critical moment, when our state of mind is prepared to receive something. We realize uh, we've gone through certain experiences, and I went through certain experiences where we realize we have a human need, and our need is purpose. We need purpose, and uh, this is just a need in human existence. We need a purpose, and uh, we may have come to a realization that everything in the universe is for our existence. And so, um, so, so maybe you've received Jesus at a young age or you've received him recently. Uh, but at some point in your life, you have to come to a point where re you realize, you come to this question of existence and you realize, I need a purpose. My existence needs a purpose. Okay? Okay. So let me go to the next slide. So right here, this is what I was just speaking. Our, our human existence is certainly for a purpose. We cannot deny that. And I think, um, you know, as Christians, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of, we all can probably agree to this. Our existence is certainly for a pure purpose. But, and some of us, we might know what this purpose is. But um, uh, so we, to, to figure out our purpose and to, to answer this cry within us for a purpose, for existence, for the purpose of our existence, we look to the Bible and um, you know, many of you probably know this verse, Genesis 1, uh, 26, where it says that God created us in our image and according to our likeness. And so we were created for and according to God's desire. So God had a desire and he, he worked it out by creating us. 
and he even uh, created us in uh, and, and a kind of framework. And so that's a really important word, framework. But I'm not going to really expound on that because I don't have a lot of time. But uh, in the reading, the reading for, for later on, uh, you'll be able to figure out what does this word framework mean and how does this relate to you. Um, but because, like I mentioned, we were created according to God's image, we were created to receive him and then to express him. This is probably familiar to some of us. Um, and uh, so, so our purpose of existence is not for making money, obtaining a higher position, or having a golden future, but our uh, purpose for our existence is to receive Jesus. Is to receive Jesus um, and that he would be expressed through us, okay? Um, but I would, like to, uh, I would like to go back to what I said earlier. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers it. Uh, and I kind of forget what my, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll get to that slide first in a second. But what I, what I mentioned earlier was about uh, pleasure. And so our taste for pleasure as we mature increases. But on the other hand, the fulfillment we derive from it, from pleasure, gradually decreases. And so many of you are um, at, a, at a, you could call it a juncture, you know, you could call it um, kind of, I mean, that's one way to look at it, or a divergence or something. But basically, you're at a point and a critical moment in your life. And, uh, you know, this could go uh, for anyone, whether you're graduating high school, whether you're in college, or whether you're about to graduate high school or just recently graduated, graduated uh, college, sorry. Um, uh, you're at a, a, a point in your life, a critical moment. And um, basically what you need to do is you need to make a choice, okay? You need to make a choice. And um, uh, when it comes down to it is what is your purpose? What is the purpose of your existence? And are you going to align yourself um, with uh, this purpose that is according to God's desire, okay? To express him, to receive him, and to express him. And so um, there's two really amazing examples that I'd like to just bring out now uh, from the word two figures we, we know very well. And um, uh, the first one is Moses, okay? So we have, uh, many of you know Moses, and I think it might just be better to go, go to the word so uh, we'll just read these verses all together, um, but um, maybe I'll just read it, um, and uh, you can read along with me. So Hebrews eleven twenty four to 26. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be ill-treated with the people of God than to have the temporary enjoyment of sin. Considering the reproach of the Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked away to the reward. All right. Uh, so these verses, oh man, these verses were very, very fresh to me. Um, and I just like to uh, uh, just touch these verses a little bit. And even how, even how the verse starts, verse 24, it says, by faith Moses, when he had grown up. So we know, we know Moses. Most of us probably know something about Moses. You know, his mother sent him away basically to be raised up by Egyptians, by the daughter of Pharaoh. And so he received an Egyptian education, you know, very, very wealthy, very cultured, uh, just the top education at the time. But when he had grown up and, uh, you know, many of us are growing up, maybe we've grown up uh, and we're growing up in the spiritual life. But we come to a point where we have to make a choice. And so Moses, he made a choice, and he chose not to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And um, I want to make this choice. Uh, but um, yeah, so he chose not to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And this, this signifies the world. Egypt signifies the world. Um, he chose to cut the ties to the world, uh, cut the ties to the temporary fleeting enjoyment of sin uh, that's mentioned in verse 25. And rather he chose, he preferred to be with the people of God, even if that meant to be ill-treated. 
And uh, the point is not choosing to be ill-treated, but the point is to, be ch is to be with the people of God, to be identified with the people of God, whether that means ill-treatment or good treatment, you know. We just choose to be with the people of God. And today that's the church. So we choose to be with the church, choose to be with uh, the brothers and the sisters. Um, and then so Moses also, he had this considering, verse 26, this esteeming, this accounting. He accounted uh, that the reproaches, the reproaches of Christ were greater riches, even uh, greater wealth, greater value than the treasures of Egypt. And so this is crazy that uh, he considered, you know, the reproach of the Christ. Whatever sufferings, whatever persecutions, whatever hardships came with following, following Christ, and we know that, you know, Christ wasn't there in the Old Testament, but just choosing to be with God's people, choosing to be for God today in the New Testament, that's just choosing to be with Christ. And so Moses made this choice. He said, I want to be with Christ. Being with Christ is far better than any worldly treasures or riches. Whether I suffer persecution, uh, whether I suffer any kind of hardships, I choose to be with Christ. And you might ask, why did Moses choose this? Why did he choose to be ill-treated with the people of God? Uh, why didn't he choose uh, the, the, you know, being in the house of Pharaoh? Why didn't he choose the treasures of Egypt? That's where he received his education, where he received his upbringing. Um, but instead, he chose uh, ill-treatment, reproach, because that, that is what was with Christ and God's people. And so today, we also can be those who choose Christ and who choose to be with God's people and to choose to make the purpose of our existence according to God's desire. And this is a, um, like the verse ends, he looked away to the reward. We know that we have an, a reward for us. And so, um, yeah, so that's really important. We have a reward. Because otherwise, the, the, the enjoyment, the pleasure is temporary. But, but we have an eternal reward. And so uh, another person we know is, is Paul. Um, you can read these verses if you like. But basically, Paul considered all his background um, of, you know, being brought up in the Jewish religion. You know, he learned from top uh, teachers. Uh, he was trained in, you know, um, in Greek, and uh, he, he received just this similar knowledge as Moses, you know, it's equivalent knowledge, but he just counted it as loss, and he counted all things as refuse, which means trash, worthless garbage. It's the stuff that's in the food trap in your sink. He considered it all as that. Um, that he could gain Christ because he valued Christ much more than anything the world can offer, even, uh, even what religion could offer. And so um, Paul and, uh, Paul and Moses, they, they are very, they have something very in common that they made an account. They counted the cost, they paid the price. And so, uh, and, and they gained Christ. They followed Christ for his purpose. And so I'm going to jump to the next slide. And so this is kind of, uh, I'm just going to end here. Uh, I'll just explain a little bit. But um, actually, I'll jump back real quick. Um, actually, no, we'll end here. But um, basically, so like I mentioned, we're going to have uh, some reading that we will actually do during the week. But it comes from a book that is the same title as uh, our series called A Blessed Human Life. And it's by an author, a minister that some of us might know, be familiar with. His name is Witness Lee. And so Witness Lee, uh, he grew up in China. Uh, he actually had a very similar, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he had a testimony that, you know, sometimes I, I consider myself similar, that he grew up in a Christian family, but Jesus Christ was not real to him until he was college age. And actually he made this prayer right here that's in the book that uh, we'll be reading through. Um, and he says, God, even if the entire world were given to me, I would not accept it. I only want you. And so um, this just shows the kind of uh, uh, choice that he made. He came to a certain point, like I was talking about, where he had to make a choice between um, his own fleeting pleasures 
are uh, uh, doing the unique pleasure that is uh, accomplishing God's purpose, making his, uh, making God's purpose, his purpose, his purpose for existence. And so I'm going to stop sharing this right now.